We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning and welcome to Daily Journal Newsbreak for Thursday, November 16th. I'm your host, Chris Kiefer, and we're going to take a look at the top news and sports stories from Northeast Mississippi. But first, let's start with today's weather forecast. We're looking at partly cloudy skies today with a high of 65 and a low of 39, 10% chance of rain. Looking ahead at your three-day outlook, Friday calls for sunny skies with a high of 71 and a low of 59, 0% chance of rain. Rain on Saturday, that's a high of 69 and a low of 38, 90% chance of rain. And on Sunday, back to sunny skies with a high of 53 and a low of 30, 0% chance of rain. Let's take a look now at today's top headlines. Mississippi could be out of the running to land a $1.6 billion automotive plant jointly run by Toyota and Mazda. Bloomberg reported Tuesday that Alabama and North Carolina were the finalists citing sources familiar with the negotiations. The Japanese automakers announced in August that the plant would build the Toyota Corolla and future Mazda crossover vehicles and employ up to 4,000 workers. Mississippi has built the Corolla at its plant in Blue Springs since 2011. It was said to be among the early contenders. However, the latest report indicates the Magnolia State is no longer in the running. Mississippi is also home to a Nissan plant in Canton, which opened in 2003. Toyota and Mazda officials have declined to comment. The new plant will build up to 300,000 vehicles a year. It is scheduled to open in 2021. The automakers are expected to announce the site of the plant early next year. Attendees packed Lane Chapel Sanctuary on Wednesday for Tupelo's annual community Thanksgiving service. The service has rotated for years between various churches. On Wednesday, it returned for the first time in decades to the historically African-American Lane Chapel CME Church on Madison Street. The service featured music by the Lane Chapel Quintet and the Tupelo High School Magical Singers. Mayor Jason Shelton also issued a proclamation marking this week as Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. The city's Homeless Task Force Chair Hannah Meharry told attendees to remember that not all community members will have a table overfilling with holiday food next week. The event has a long history in Tupelo, but city leadership has put more official backing behind it in recent years. Tupelo Outreach Coordinator Marcus Gary said he appreciates the event's diversity. A proposed change to Mississippi's Medicaid program could impact between 15,000 and 20,000 people. The change would require those individuals to work or to participate in work skills training programs in order to receive health care through Medicaid. The Mississippi Division of Medicaid is preparing to request a waiver from the federal government. It would include the work requirement for those who receive Medicaid because their children are in the program or because they are the caretaker for someone else on Medicaid. The request is slated to be submitted to the federal government on December 11th. Not many people attended Wednesday's public hearing to comment on the proposed change. Another public hearing will be held at 10 a.m. Friday at the War Memorial Building in Jackson. In recent years, state officials have been looking for ways to save money on the Medicaid program. Some believe the work requirement would accomplish that goal. And in sports, the Tupelo Lady Wave basketball team has received some bad news this week. Shamaya Carruthers tore her ACL and will miss the rest of the season. Carruthers is one of the area's top young players. She went down in the final seconds of Tupelo's opening game against Lafayette and needed assistance to get off the court. Her loss is a huge blow for Tupelo. Carruthers is a third-year starter who averaged 10.4 points and 6.5 rebounds per game last year. Tupelo lost to Lafayette but has since won three in a row. Head coach Matt Justice replaced Carruthers with freshman Janiah Hinton. Hinton has scored 10, 12, and 13 points in the three games she started. Justice said the Lady Wave benefits from having a lot of depth. He said the injury will force Hinton to grow up quickly. And that does it for Newsbreak on this Thursday. Don't forget that this show is just one of the many online offerings courtesy of the Daily Journal that gets you news off the page and on the go. Check out the Memo podcast for news and entertainment from Northeast Mississippi with hosts Emma Kent and Derek Russell. On Wednesday's episode, Ray Van Dusen and Emily Paul from the Monroe Journal 
talked about their recent story on a former John Benet Ramsey murder suspect who now lives in Aberdeen. We also talked about the new Mississippi museums to open next month, the Talbot House sobriety program opening a bakery, and a photo essay on a pool hall. Listen in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or at memo.djournal.com. And Ole Miss and Mississippi State fans, check out the Double Coverage podcast. Be reporters Parrish Alford and Logan Lowry talk about the Rebels and Bulldogs each week. Look for a new episode this afternoon in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or at doublecoverage.djournal.com. Each story that we discussed on Newsbreak can be found in your daily journal or online at djournal.com, where you can also find a new episode of Newsbreak each weekday morning at 7 a.m. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Kiefer. Have a great Thursday.